Do you love factory games with their complex recipe balancing and tech grind? But do you also hate it when they become complete spaghetti mess of conveyor belts? Well then welcome to Desynced and the future of manufacturing, where the clanking of conveyor belts has given way to a symphony of sleek, futuristic transport drones. Hey there my friends, I'm Kenator and this is my review for Desynced that has just been released into early access on Steam. Shout out to developer Stage Games for supplying this review copy. Desynced is part factory game and part real time strategy, where modularity, adaptability and programmability are not only the keys to progress, but also what sets this game apart from all the others. So how does it play? Well you start off with very few units that have been deployed by an AI from your damaged ship in orbit, and you kick things off with an old school Command and Conquer style deployment of your HQ, and you get to work mining some nearby basic resources. The game immediately teaches you how to construct items and start building your base out. And here's where the game starts to give you just a little peek as to how customizable it can be. The buildings come in everything from small flat mounting points to HQ sized buildings. These different types of buildings do nothing on their own however, but they do have specific slots for external and internal equipment as well as a certain amount of storage. The external slots come in three sizes, small, medium and large, and you'll quickly notice all your little starter drones were made with the exact same system behind them. No single piece of equipment is made for any specific building or unit. It is completely up to you on what you equip and where. The only limit is the slot size of the module. One great thing here is you don't always have to have matching sizes either. Small items can fit in both medium and large, and mediums can also fit in large. This gives you so much freedom in your setup. For instance, if you had a drone big enough, you could even mine and process what you mine right on the drone itself. Or you could set up a more traditional factory and have the buildings process it for you. There is also nothing stopping you from putting the mining lasers on the buildings too if you wanted. The choice is yours. Equipment is also not permanently placed. So if you wanted to rearrange drone or building equipment, it's as simple as moving it from one place to another with a drag and drop. Doing so will automatically order a drone to move it for you. Whatever you end up choosing to put on what, you can blueprint this and add it to a library for later replication and use. And that brings me to another area of the game that shows so much adaptability. How your orders work and what can be automated. To start with, your drones are part of a logistics network. This will queue up orders for drones to fulfill, but this is just the beginning. You can set up your own recurring orders for drones and take them off the network. Or you can have multiple networks and each having their own set of drones and tasks instead of all the drones in an all you can order buffet. A little research later and you can build, equip and program behavior modules. And this is where you factory optimizing addicts are gonna have your minds blown. Desynced comes with a vast array of visual programming for you to easily set up without a single line of code. This makes creating more advanced behaviors a bit more accessible to all types of players and can help you create drones that auto search for things for example, or run away automatically if they're damaged past a certain threshold. The scope and possibility of this system is purely in the player's hands, and I know many a much smarter player than I will put it to good use. And that's a good thing, because should that player also be kind enough, there is an easy way to share complete behaviours with a single copy paste of a long alphanumeric string. This is so simple, you can just share these via Discord or the game's Steam forum. This is fantastic forward thinking from the devs, just like launching the game with mod and Steam Workshop support. One just has to look at the breadth of successful and enjoyed mods for something like Factorio to know this is a very smart choice to start off with. For combat, you should know this is mostly optional, and you can start the game with the choice of hostility settings, should you enjoy a more relaxed factory experience. But hostile map minions aside, Desynced also has multiplayer, which can be played either as co-op or versus. Sadly I couldn't try any of these out before release, but I would imagine it's pretty self-explanatory, play with or against someone. And for now there is only a single race to play, but more will be coming down the line in the future, but more of that a bit later in the video. As for maps, they are all procedurally generated with no map size. That's right, they are pretty much infinite, or as infinite as your PC will push to support. Each map will have the same variety of different biomes, and each biome will have its own challenges to overcome, but I won't spoil those challenges for you. But no, you will need to solve them to push your tech forward and unlock new things. The tech tree itself is quite large and made up of five distinct trees. 
the names of which should give you a little hint to the game's content. But don't think you'll be whipping through all these very quickly, the game is pretty slow paced and methodical. You can easily spend hours gathering the resources needed to upgrade just one technology further down the tree, or while searching out the map and possibly fending off creatures along the way. Another thing you'll find on the map are these little buildings. Now some of these will just give you resources, some will be locked behind puzzles and some will be locked behind damage equipment. Damage equipment is pretty simple, just bring it the piece it's asking for and you will unlock a couple of random different resources. Puzzles however will give you two options, you will either have a colour flipping puzzle where you have to get all of them to blue instead of red and the trick here is when you click on one of the tiles it changes all the other tiles within one radius of it. And the other puzzle is a line puzzle, rotate all the blocks until you can light up all the specific points along the lines. I found these puzzles really neat and gave a little bit of break from the factory gameplay and you get a nice reward from some of these as well which can give you a little leap in technology for buildings and equipment that you may not already have access to. The game as a whole is well presented with its very clean and intuitive UI to its beautiful graphics. You can play from any angle you want and nearly any zoom level as well. Sometimes you just have to stop the micromanagement and just enjoy how stunning the game is. Zoom right in and watch the sun rise or set as your drones swim effortlessly around your base where you can see all the machines you've added to each building and drone displayed on the building itself. Everything has great models, textures and animations. A lot of love has gone into crafting this game. So can I hear you ask, it can't all be good right? Alas, no. For me personally, I didn't like the glacial pace of things. I found myself getting bored when I accidentally bottlenecked myself in production and scaling up power in the early game to support an army of mining drones was quite tedious for me. So my warning for the more casual factory game enthusiasts would be to maybe wait for a mod to adjust the mining rates or amounts so you don't go completely insane. The other nitpick I have is the amount of content. Now this will vary a lot depending on the player and how deep you want to go into the game, but there is just the one mode to play so far. There's also not a lot of story and what it does have leaves some unanswered questions. But this is what you get sometimes with an early access game since they are by nature unfinished. Desynced however in my opinion is a very solid foundation on which to build on top of and I have no problems recommending it to anyone that loves factory games. The RTS style controls and building works well, the game looks stunning and due to the nature of this type of game there is hours upon hours of content. And the devs have already laid out a roadmap to get themselves to a 1.0 completed state of the game, which as you can see here is not short on content. So if you want to jump in you will find its steam page and official discord in the description and if you enjoyed this video do please give the like button a little tickle on your way out or check out one of my other videos, this would really help me a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.